Today I'm going to have a look at uh, Paraforce and hosting source control. You would want to do this because if you screw something up on your project, then source control lets you go back to before you screwed your project up. Very, very useful. It also lets you work on your project with people all around the world. And uh, a lot of game studios nowadays use something called Paraforce. In fact, Epic Games themselves actually use Paraforce internally. So basically, we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how to set up Paraforce. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Guys, I just want to mention the Unreal Engine Survival Game course is up on the Patreon now. We're here in the testing level, and this is actually where we develop the entire game. We create an interaction system with pickups, a true first-person camera. We have a fully modular character that comes with the course, and we make a modular clothing system to go with it. The game is also open world, and you can play it with other people, and we show you how to actually deploy the game on a dedicated server and launch it with Steam. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description. You can buy the course, unsubscribe, and you'll still have lifetime access. Anyways, back to the video. Okay, so the first thing you need is a, uh, a computer to host your Paraforce server on. Now, I use DigitalOcean, and I'm going to put my referral link in the description. What this will do is it'll give you $100 of credit, so you should be able to do this whole video for free, basically. You shouldn't have to pay anything. Um, if you have some other service that you want to use to get a, uh, a Linux box set up, then feel free to use that, but I just use DigitalOcean because that seems to be the most popular one. All right, so once you're in uh, the DigitalOcean panel, you want to go to Droplets. And I actually already have one that's hosting my profile server, but I'm just going to make another one. So we're going to click on Create and Create a Droplet. So today we're going to be setting up our profile server using Ubuntu. Uh, you can use other distributions, but I like that one. Uh, and we're going to use 18. And so we'll go ahead and go down to choose a plan. You can see it's $40 a month, but if you click this arrow, it's actually a lot cheaper. Now you could technically do this for $5 a month. However, I like the $10 a month tier. I just think it's a little bit, well, it is a little bit faster, which is gonna be nice for as our powerful server starts to get a bit bigger. It's also got a 50 gigabyte disc, which uh, a lot of game projects are going to get a little bit bigger. So I'd recommend getting this as the bare minimum, the $10 one. Next, we're just going to select a data center region. Just choose somewhere that's close to you. So if you live in the UK, you'd want to select London. Um, but Singapore is probably the closest one to me because I'm in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go one time password. And now you want to choose a host name. So I'm going to call this Perforce server you can call it whatever you want and uh that should pretty much be it so just go down to create droplet click on create droplet and now it's just creating a droplet and you will get an email with all the credentials to log in and i'll show you how to do that when i get the email next up you'll want to go to google and just search putty for windows and download putty this basically lets you ssh into your machine which is how we actually access that ubuntu machine that we just created so go ahead and download that and install it so you want to go into your emails and you will have an email from DigitalOcean with all of your credentials the first thing you're going to want to do is paste in the ip address into putty so you need to open putty up and put that in um, and then that should pretty much be all you need to do so just put your ip in and then click on open and then click on trust okay so uh you want to log in as root this will all be in the email. It will tell you to log in as root. And in the email, it will also give you your password to log in with. So just go ahead and enter in your password. And it's going to tell you to actually set up a new password. Um, oh, sorry. It's going to tell you to enter the current password again. So put that in first. And, uh, and then type in your new password. Don't worry if it's not showing you anything. That's the whole point. Basically, if you're typing in a password, it's not going to show you what you're typing in, but you are actually typing stuff. And so once you've set up your new password, you can see that we are now in the server. Okay, so I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not really a Linux expert, but uh, this is just stuff that I found on the Paraforce website for how to configure it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna run is this command here. I will put the, uh, the text tutorial in the description, which has all this stuff in it, but uh, you will otherwise just have to pause the video and, uh, and watch what I've put in, so. That's the first thing. We're going to add the Paraforce packaging key to our APT key ring. And now we're going to add the Paraforce uh, repository to our uh, configuration. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, cd dot dot. We're going to ls to view all the directories, and we want to go into etc. apt sources dot list dot d, and then if you do a ls, there shouldn't be anything in here. And what you want to do is you want to do nano, and then perforce dot list so what we're doing is we're creating a file called perforce dot list inside of that file you will need to put the following line and then where it says distro you'll want to put bionic bionic and that's all we need in here so what you do now is press Control x to exit and then press y to save the file and then just press enter to save it as perforce dot list now, if you press ls or type ls, you'll see that we have that file perforce.list. We're now going to run apt get update, which is going to update apt get. So with all that nonsense out of the way, we're now actually going to install perforce. And specifically, we want to install the perforce server, which is actually called p4d. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to run sudo apt get install helix p4d that is the perforce server and uh, let's see here uh, go ahead and type yes to accept this and it's going to download the server onto your machine okay so we have downloaded the perforce server and setting it up is actually quite simple uh, there is a script that comes with it to do that so you want to put in the following sudo and then this path to the configuration shell script and then type enter and now we're actually setting the entire script up so the first thing it wants to know is the perforce service name i'm just going to call this perforce service next it's asking for the server root i'm going to put this in home slash perforce server and then uh, type a y to create the directory uh, it's asking for the Unicode mode. The default is none or no. So uh, just press enter. Case sensitive, we're just going to press enter again. The server address is pretty important. You want to put in the IP of your server. You want to do SSL colon. Oops. So SSL colon, type in the IP address of the server. This is in your email that you got from DigitalOcean. So type that in. And then at the end, you want to do colon. 1666 that's the port that perforce is going to be running on so go ahead and press enter and now we have the perforce super user login so this is like the uh the administrative account basically uh, i'm going to call this guy perforce admin and then press enter and then give him a password you will need to re-enter the password And you can see that it says P4D configuration has completed successfully. So that's all we need to do. We've actually um, installed uh, the Perforce server and we have basically uh, set it up and whatnot. So now we can do the rest of this on uh, Windows. So we don't have to deal in the command line anymore. I'm not too familiar with the Linux command line. So I'm sure, like myself, you'll be breathing a massive sigh of relief. Next up, we need to download the Perforce Visual Client. So this is different from the server. This is the thing that you and your team will be using to actually manage your project with source control. So go to perforce.com, click on Downloads, and then click on the Helix Visual Client, P4V. This is how you connect to the Perforce server and set up your project to be used with it. Um, I am using Windows. I am using x64. And then I'd recommend just uh, having the latest version and then click on download. Once you've run the installer, simply click on next. Um, we're going to install pretty much all of these tools. We want the admin tool, we want the, uh, the visual client. We'll just install everything. It's quite a small install. And so go ahead and go to next. Uh, now this is where you put in your server information, which you could do here, but we're not going to do that. We'll just set this up later. Uh, you can also set a text editor. Maybe you want Visual Studio or something to open up. So you can do that there. And we're going to click next and then click on install so we're going to add a new user and if anyone joins your team this is how you would add them as a user to your perforce so go ahead and search for p4 admin 
the server is going to be SSL colon and then your IP of your server that is in your email from uh, DigitalOcean. So just put that in and then colon again, 1666. This is the same thing that we set up uh, a moment ago in the uh, command line. And the user, I believe I called it Perforce Admin. And if you click on OK, it'll actually ask for the uh, for the username. We're going to trust this fingerprint. And then when you're asked for the username, go ahead and put that in. That's the one that we just configured a moment ago. I hope you remembered it. And uh, now we have the Helix Admin Client open. If you go to the Users and Groups section, you can create a new user. I'm going to add one for myself, so I'm going to call it Ruben. And just give it a password of your choice. And you can fill in some of this other information if you'd like. And I'm going to add a new group. I'm going to call it Developer and then click on Add. And then Yes to create a new uh, group. And I'm going to check Owner as well. And we'll, uh, what have I done wrong? I think I'm missing something, so it won't let me click on apply here. Okay, so I think apply will not be uh, selectable unless you put in an email and a full name. So I just put in a fake email and then we're going to go apply. And then we're going to click on open. Oh, sorry, okay. Or we'll just close that actually. Uh, so here's our new user. So we've actually configured a new user. Now, how do we access per, uh, the, the server? How do we log in to our source control? Uh, the way that you do this is through P4V. So you're going to search for P4V and open it up. And it's going to ask you for the server that you want to log into. You want to use the exact same settings that we literally just used. So SSL, your IP, 1666. The username is going to be Ruben because I actually just made an account for myself. And now you need to make something called a workspace. The workspace is where we're going to be storing all of your files. And so if I have a friend in America and I want him to work on a game with me, he needs somewhere to put my game files, right? So that's what your workspace is responsible for. So we're going to make a new workspace by clicking on new, put in my password, and you're going to want to give your workspace a name. I'm going to call mine um, uh, desktop workspace. And this is good. Maybe you have a laptop and you want to do it on your laptop. You'd have a laptop workspace as well and, you know, maybe an office workspace. You can basically create as many of these workspaces on different machines as you want. And then just go ahead and click on the depot uh, in the depot tree here and then click on OK. And now we have a new workspace. So now you can click on OK to log into your server for the very first time. When you first log into the server, you're going to have this uh, add files wizard. I don't personally like to use this. I don't really see any point, so just cancel that. And I'm just going to click no here and no. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like going blind. So I'm going to go to edit preferences and then I'm going to go to, where is it? Uh, display there's a display there yeah there we go and then you just want to go dark theme apply okay you don't have to do that uh, but I like having that on and you do have to restart people V if you do that okay so we're back in people V how do we add our unreal project to source control let me show you how to do this it's pretty simple and the great thing is Powerforce is integrated into unreal engine so this whole process is, is pretty straightforward Inside of the Unreal Project Browser, I'm going to go to New Project, C++. You can do a Blueprint one, but I think C++ is good because there's some other stuff that I can show you. Uh, and we're going to go with like a third-person project, and I'm just going to call this My Project. Doesn't really matter. And if you have an existing project, you obviously wouldn't do this step. So we'll click on Create Project. My project's open now, and I'm going to go to the Content folder here and just show it in the Explorer. So this is the content folder. I'm going to go back to where my project is. So here is my project. Here are all my project files. And now you're going to go to your Paraforce workspace. I put mine in C uses Ruben Paraforce. This is the default uh, path that it'll take. And here's my desktop workspace that I just created a moment ago. What I'm going to do is take all of my files and uh, I'm just going to drag them into this project here. You will need to close your project before you do this. Otherwise, you'll get these errors. And so now I've put my project into my workspace. Now, it's very important. Um, there are things that you do not want to add to source control. So for example, the intermediate folder, this is generated when you open up the project. So we don't need to commit it to source control. It's also really big in size, um, one gigabyte. That's unneeded space that we're taking up, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that. 
because we can auto generate that at any time. We can also generate the saved folder at any time and we can generate the binaries folder at any time. The .vs is uh, generated and the solution is generated because um, each developer makes their solution themselves by clicking on uh, generate Visual Studio project files. This is all anyone needs to get set up and start using your project. Everything else gets generated when you open up the project. But these are the essential ones, the assets for your game, the source code, obviously this stuff is not generated. So once you've moved all that stuff into your Paraforce workspace, if you click on refresh, you can see this is our workspace view. This is all the stuff that's in our workspace. Now these are just on my computer right now. They're not on Paraforce. So how do I add them to Paraforce? What you want to do is just select everything like that and then click on add. So this is going to add all of this stuff to source control. And so we're going to click on OK. And I like to just always use the default change list. And you can see that there's 322 assets to add. So this might take some time to do. And then when you're ready, this is all marked for add. It hasn't been added yet. And the way that we add it is by clicking on submit. And this will submit any changes that we've made. In our case, the changes that we've made was we want to add everything. And so I'm just going to say uh, submit game to source control. So this is a description. And whenever you make some changes, this is where you type in what you changed. So maybe you'd say, um, I implemented a new weapon or something like that. So you just describe what you've done and then you click on submit. And now this is uploading our game to our server that we created at the start of the video. And what this means is your friend in Brazil or America or wherever, he can sign into source control and he can grab all the files from the server. Okay, so we've uploaded our project. The last thing that I want to do is create something called a P4 ignore. This just tells Paraforce to ignore that intermediate folder and the saved folder and all those other folders that I said we don't want to upload. So simply just come into your Paraforce workspace and make a new text document and make sure the name is empty and it should just be dot P4 ignore and then uh, change it and then just open it up with code or notepad or whatever you want. And you want to paste in the following lines, saved intermediate, um, and then we just ignore the solution file and some other stuff as well. And then just go to uh, file and then save that P4 ignore file. And then back in Paraforce, just refresh and you'll see that the P4 ignore file is now there. Click on add and, uh, and then submit it. And then I'm just going to say add my P4 ignore file. So that's just another step you have to do. And now the P4 Ignore is set up. So if you create a user for a friend, what they can do is click on the uh, the root here and they won't have any of these files. And then they just click get latest and that will get all of these files on their machine. So that's how you share your project with a friend and invite people to work with you on your project. So I'm going to double click on my U project here to open it up. This works just like any other file explorer. I'll just click on rebuild. So how do we connect to Paraforce in Unreal Engine? So I mentioned that if you, uh, if you connect to source control in Unreal Engine, it's fully integrated. Okay, so to connect, we're gonna go to server. We're gonna do the same settings that we would do to connect to P4V normally. So uh, SSL, your uh, IP, your port, uh, my username to connect with. So go ahead and click on available workspaces. And if nothing comes up, what you may need to do is make sure you signed into P4V first. And if that still doesn't work, uh, in P4V, go to help and then click on system info. And then there will be a line here that says workspace host and it's saying Ruben Ward is my workspace host. So I'm going to type in Ruben Ward into my host and then I'll click it again. And now it's popped up. So I can go ahead and select that, accept the settings. And now I'm connected to source control. Now, why is this important? Why do you want to connect to source control in the editor? This is the power. Say I make a new blueprint. Obviously, this is now part of my game and I want it to uh, submit to source control, right? So I'm going to say my blueprint. This is part of my game. And when I uh, when I save it, Unreal is going to automatically add it. You can see it's got a plus next to it now. And so now I can just submit it by going to submit. Or you can do this in P4V. You don't have to do this in the editor, but it's nice to. And I'm going to say my game's first change. How cool is that? Now I've just added this to my project. My friend in America, when he gets the project, he's also going to have this. Um, so yeah, super cool. 
and if I want to make a change to it, I just open it up. Maybe I want to change the uh, settings here. I just want to turn off this setting. So I compile it, I save it, and now it's going to check it out. We're going to click on check out. You can see that this file is now checked out. So it means that I'm making changes to it. Again, we just do a submit. And we just say uh, change tick setting on my actor. And then you just click on submit. And now this is submitted to source control. So your friends in America, when he gets this file, he's also going to have this change. So that's how you sort of uh, commit changes and add files and stuff. There is way more options to per uh, peripherals. It's a lot more complicated than that, but those are kind of the building blocks. Uh, you can also delete files and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, hope that helps you out a lot. Uh, once you start using source control, you will not be able to work without it. It is excellent. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.